Welcome to the Epic Aesthetic High Intensity Training Vlog number 6. So I've spent a few months training with my first sort of foray back into pure HIT training. Um, going back to the sort of extreme slow cadence recommended by Mike Mensa, which is a 4-4 or 424 cadence depending on the exercise. Um, basically kicking off my chest routine with my favorite little technique of pre-exhaust. So I'm using the incline dumbbell um, before a incline hammer chest press. So that's an isolation exercise, super settled with a compound move. And what that basically achieves is, for me, my chest I've always found quite hard to develop. And the reason being that when doing a lot of pressing movements for the chest, I find that you know my shoulders and my triceps being the weaker, smaller muscle always seem to sort of get taxed first. And, and my chest muscle, has a lot more sort of ability in it to go further, but because the weak link in the chain of the triceps and the shoulders are giving out on my chest, I'm never able to sort of fully develop my chest. So what I do to get around that sort of biomechanical um, limitation here is I use an isolation exercise prior to a compound lift, and that really helps sort of make sure that, that during that compound lift, my, my chest is pre-exhausted fresh muscles of the arm like the shoulders and the triceps when they come into play um, mean that when I fail in the chest it's the chest that fails first before my triceps and shoulders in fact it's basically only my chest that fails my triceps and shoulders um, when doing the second exercise are basically just doing a warm-up set um, for them but the chest muscle itself having been pre-exhausted is getting absolutely annihilated and taken to failure so that's basically the premise behind the pre-exhaust technique. So with my form, you'll see that I've shortened it quite significantly, performing perhaps only 70% of the stroke. And what that does is make sure that the load is always on the chest muscle. If you bring the dumbbells together above your head, you shift all the weight off your chest and it sort of sits on your delts and it'll sit on your triceps, but not on your chest. So shortening that range of motion to the effective sort of regions of the chest contraction a really effective way to, to tweak that exercise. Um, immediately upon failure here, I move to my compound lift of the hammer strength incline press. Um, I'll point out here, my right hand shoulder is, is drifting up quite dramatically. And basically, I wasn't mindful during this set of my form. I just sort of started pushing the weight. And so in, in future videos, I, I hope to sort of correct that problem. Um, but I like to keep it in there because you can learn a lot from people's mistakes as much as you can from them showing you sort of ideal form week to week. So that's something I need to work on. So six to 10 reps on the first exercise and just a few reps, like three to six reps on that second compound lift are enough to sort of finish off the chest. Here you'll see my partner hopping around to the back of the machine. Um, because this is a chest and back combo machine, um, the back handles sort of act as a really good lever to do negative reps. So my partner pulls those levers down, which enables me to sort of complete the positive portion of the lift. And then I do some slow controlled negatives to really tax off the chest. So three functions of the chest muscle or any muscle are positive contraction, a static hold, and a lowering or negative phase. So if you toast off those three functions, that's what I guess would describe as, as total failure of the muscle. If you stop a rep short in a conventional fashion after you can't lift it anymore, well, that's only just positive failure. It's not complete failure. Um, but one of the dangers of, of doing negatives too often and too regularly is that you can overtrain those muscles. So use them sparingly. So um, sometimes you'll see me do them, sometimes you won't. And basically I'll just go by, by how good I feel on the day, whether I want to throw them in there or not, how keen I am or how rested I am. Um, so those first two exercises really hit the upper portion of the chest muscle, upper and mid portions, and especially that sort of outside tie-in area um, with those incline flies sort of under the armpits, the muscle really gets worked well there. Um, so I shift to a dip now so that I can really target the sort of lower or, or bowl scoop part of the chest, you know, that, that sort of part under the nipple that you want to sort of build out so it's flooded with that sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger swollen look. Um, so this exercise is a really good old-school basic exercise for targeting the lower chest. I 
find it a lot safer than a decline press and, and it has a better range of motion and again you see me throwing in a few negatives at the end after I've achieved positive failure so once I can't complete a four second negative on these negative only reps I finish the set having taken the set to complete failure. Okay so now to target the sort of inner part, inner lower part of the chest I do some cable flies um, with the high pulley position it essentially hits the um, lower part of the chest but again most of the, um, the chest contracts together here but just sort of different parts of the, the fibers will be recruited based on the angle of attack. So Four exercises for chest um, can sometimes be considered excessive for a body part in high intensity training circles. Um, I'm a bit wary of it myself but it's just something I want to try and see how it goes. Um, and again, I sort of structure those exercises so that they're all a, a different portion of the chest. Um, because if I sort of sat there and, and did incline dumbbell only, an incline press, and then incline bench press, you know, I could build a really big upper chest, but um, I wouldn't be able to develop the entire chest, especially the lower regions of the chest, if I didn't, um, I guess, include those different angles. So. Um, just something I'm playing around with. I still don't think it's excessive volume, you know. Essentially, I've done four sets to failure for the chest, um, which is incredibly low volume when compared to sort of traditional training methods in the gym. Um, but I do feel that if I'm not recovering week to week, um, I may take out one of the exercises. But um, as it stands, this is the routine I'm gonna do and monitor for feedback. So with the form here, just a bend in the elbow, try and maintain that bend all the way through the lift, 424, and really pose the chest in a contracted position for two seconds to, to, to bring out that inner part of the chest. Um, some people don't really believe you can kind of spot target your development of your muscle, sort of suggesting that the different exercises just contract all of the chest regardless, but I think you know, anyone with experience in the gym really understands that, that different angles um, on muscles, especially like the back and the chest, um, really do affect the development. I mean, it's not like you can absolutely control and, and detail your muscle like a sculptor, but you can definitely enhance and, and slightly change the shape of your muscle by, by choosing different exercises. Um, so here I'm starting my shoulder routine. Because I've already done all that pressing in terms of the hammer press and the dips, it's really unnecessary for me to sort of do an overhead press maneuver straight up. The anterior head's already sort of sufficiently warmed and, and, and getting fatigued. So I pick an exercise here that targets the side head. So I pre-exhaust the side head or the lateral head of the delt and then I move to the overhead machine press. So when I move to that overhead machine press in a second, um, the side head of my delts are going to be pretty much fully fatigued, almost finished off. And then by adding that compound move, I've got the front delts coming into play, a bit of tricep activity coming into play. And that's going to really finish off the shoulder as, as far as um, hitting the sort of side and front heads of the complex. Um, what I find is, is that it's sort of unnecessary for me to do overhead presses um, outside the context of pre-exhaust um, because the front head gets so much stimulus from your chest routine so when thinking about programming or designing your own routines you just really need to think about every exercise um, how it fits in terms of your development and whether it constitutes you know, overtraining or over targeting an area so by using the um, pre-exhaust of the side head with the upright rows there and then throwing in the overhead press at the end, I feel that I sort of achieve my objectives of building the side head of the tricep without overstimulating or, or doing too much volume for the front head of the shoulder. So again, just low reps on the second exercise, three to six reps. Um, I'm not really bothering with, with negatives here because I feel that you know, the arms have already sort of copped it a bit with the chest routine. So just, just go to failure, positive failure, and as long as you're proving your reps um, week to week, you're going to see that growth and development. Um, so just to finish off the sort of long head of the tricep, I use an isolation exercise, tricep push down. 
six to ten reps to failure, four to four cadence, nothing fancy. Um, again, all that pressing um, with the chest and shoulders basically means that that side part of the tricep, so on, on the outside of the arm there, um, called the medial head, is, is sufficiently fatigued. You know, it's really copped a lot of work. And so why I use isolation exercises almost exclusively for triceps when training together with chest and shoulders before them um, is to really hit the long head of the tricep and that's the back part of your arm there. That sort of bit that, that pops down below, tucks into the, uh, behind the elbow there. And that's kind of the, the piece of muscle that when you're doing an overhead bicep shot is gonna hang down below the arm and balance out the, the bicep above. So. Again, I really pick my exercises and programming so that I just specifically hit areas I want to develop and avoid too much overlap in terms of um, what fibers and what recruitment paths uh, I'm stimulating in my muscles. So obviously all, shoulder, all, all chest work involves some shoulder and tricep activity. So if those three things are on the same day, you've got to really pick and choose carefully what exercises you do. So just a little bit of awkward posing on the internet, as labelled, um, just to see how my development's coming along. I recently got a body fat scan and, and came in at 15%, so I don't think I'm looking too bad for 15%, but I sort of aim to sort of be closer to 10% for my off season, um, especially being natty, so that I can um, be in striking distance when I choose to compete. So um, thanks for watching everyone, I hope you're enjoying the videos and, and please feel free to ask questions and comment and um, like, share and subscribe. Peace!